Hey, it's your boy Trail saying what's up. Let's look at another quick tip inside of Houdini. This time looking at the font up and how we can generate text that has nice beveled edges that's suitable for render. Now we all know how crucial text and typography is to motion design. There's no question about that. It's the bread and butter of motion design. So generating type in 3D should be relatively easy and it is, but generating renderable type is not so easy. Let's look at why. First, when you generate typography by default in 3D, you typically get something that looks like this, where the front and back faces are really not suitable for any kind of subdivision. And you get this extremely sharp edges that would not catch any highlights if we should render this as is. So we need to do a little bit of reshuffling to get this work as it should. Let's look at what we can do. So here inside of Houdini, I have generated this quick little recipe here that can get us some really nice typography in no time. So let's look at it. So first we start with the font up, which just generates the typography in Houdini. It's just a native font up. And we're using a font here of Serra. The font, the primitive type on the font up is currently set to Bezier. And we do just a little bit of tracking to get the typography to look nicer. And then we Sample. Now, like I said, the font sub is generating Bezier curves. We resample to get even uh, topology along these curves, and it is now into polygonal curves. We then use the end sub to create, to close the, the curves to make sure that all these curves are closed first. Then we do the extrude. And now with the extrude, we have these nicely extruded text, but with atrocious topology. So let's let's start working on fixing that. So first we use the fun sop to ensure that everything is the fuse sop, sorry, to ensure that everything is connected. And then this is where the first bit of technique starts, where we group the front and back faces based on their normals. So if we look at the normals of the faces, we can see that the, the front faces, their normals are pointing, in this case, in the positive Z direction, and the back face, their normals are pointing in the negative Z direction. So we group based on that. So in the first groups up, we are grouping the, we're grouping by normals and we have it set to the positive Z direction. So it will group the front faces. Then the second groups up, we have it set to the negative Z direction, still grouping by normals. And this will group the back faces. Notice I'm using the same group name in both groups up so that the, so that we only have one group which contains both the front and back faces. Then we do the poly extrude. This polygon extrude is extruding just those faces that we group. It's doing an inner and inset extrude here on those faces, the back and front faces that we grouped. So this gives us these nice topologies around uh, topology around the edge of the typography. So still working with those grouped faces, we do a remesh, and this is where we get some topology that we can actually start to work with and subdivide. So doing this remesh on the front and back faces, now we can subdivide this geometry and have nice topology being that these faces are flat. If these faces weren't flat, we would find ourselves in serious problems when we try to subdivide this, but because it's flat faces, so we're good. Again, we do another few stuff just to, again, after the remesh, just to ensure that everything is still connected. Now, if you look here, if we should subdivide this now as is, you can see it doesn't look as refined and as polished as we would want it because we do not have the necessary topology along these areas to hold the geometry when we subdivide. So that's what these two knife subs are for. So the first knife sub just adds this line here, this edge here along the back face, and the second knife adds one to the front. So now when we subdivide, you can see we get really nice topology that's ready for rendering. We have nice beveled edges to catch the highlights when we do our rendering. So that's the essential recipe for generating super fast, nice renderable fonts inside of Houdini. So let's, this works for me on pretty much every font that I've tried so far. Let's look at one font in particular, uh, Basilia. And you can see when we choose Basilia, we run into some issues. This doesn't look great at all. So let's figure out why we're running into these issues and quickly solve them. So we can go down the line to see where these issues jump into our network and the poly extrude here. And then we do the remesh and boom, this is where all the problems begin. So let's look at why this is. It's actually coming from the poly extrude. The reason for that is because the inset amount on the extrude is too much for a font like this, because you notice this font has some really narrow areas. So it's, it has these narrow areas and then these wide areas. So that's the issue. We need to have a poly inset value that is good enough for these narrow areas. So let's jump back to the poly extrude and reduce the inset. So let's look at that. So we go from two, we can reduce it further. 
0.5. There we go. So now when we do the remesh, you can see that we are no longer getting that awful topology. It's now good. And if we should come down to the subdivide, you can see this font now subdivides really nice, nice beveled edges so that we can have really cool lighting. We can even push this a little further if we want to. There we go. Really nice, renderable fonts inside of side effects Houdini. As an extra bonus tip, you might be wondering, well, why subdivide the font? Anyways, why not just bevel the edges and have nice beveled edges so that we can render? Well, let's take a look at that and see how that works. So here we are back to the extrude, the initial extrude with our sharp edges. Then we do a group. So we group this time by edges and we group by unshared edges because by default, the faces are not connected to this part of the geometry. So we do the group by unshared edges. Then we do a fuse to connect them. And we still have that group. That group one gets carried over. And then we do a bevel on that group. So this bevel now gives us our nice edges. But as you can see, we have all sorts of shading artifacts from from the topology so this is the issue why i choose not to just bevel because these shading artifacts though sometimes you can get away with them in this case i wouldn't even attempt it that is the reason why we go through the other process of doing it this way to have really nice geometry all around zero shading artifacts and we are good to go again thank you for watching like and subscribe to the channel for sure there will be more great stuff to come your way it's your boy Trail, out.